Hello and welcome to another beer. Wait, no, 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 not today. Not today. It's been pouring on and off all day. Not a beautiful day in Florida, but a gloomy day in Florida. So that's where we're at today. All right. So today, lots of lots of things to do. Lots of very important things. Lots of things that really need to get done. Um, and we're kind of doing them all at once. So if you guys saw the dyno video, which first off, I want to thank Kings. Left my Sony action cam there, which sucked because it had the footage on it from that day and the day before. So he overnighted it to me and I was able to get it in time. But look at the way he wrapped it. This is literally like the eighth layer of wrapping. <laughs> Oh my god, this is gonna take forever, I hate you. Literally took me like five minutes while cutting the saran wrap to unwrap it. Jerk. Uh, but huge thanks to them in general just for getting me on the dyno in time and everything. Like, it's awesome that we were able to get that done with such short notice. So, uh, if you saw that video, I talked about how I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go mount my power steering cooler real quick. You know, the line stuff should be coming in today. I've got like half of it. I've got the 90 degree fittings. And I was like, yeah, yeah, no problem. And then we're gonna go to week night. Well, I didn't finish before week night because I made these brackets which I'll just show you on the car. I had the oil cooler mounted here, but that left absolutely no room for the power steering cooler. So I had to relocate it, turn it sideways, got to relocate the power steering cooler, well, put it sideways to begin with, and put it here, which like really was <laughs> like totally changed how easy this was gonna be. So I've made the top brackets for both sides. So you can see it's got rib nuts, it bolts on there, they're gonna weld it right here. And then I need to tack those in, get them in place, and then make the bottom bracket, which will just go down to the bottom bolts here. So I do want to finish that up before we start on the major project of today, brakes. So I'm going to go ahead, just because I'm too excited and I can't wait, I'm going to go ahead and get this unboxed, and I've got some Mishimoto stuff as well to show you. All right, this is the big brake kit. This is very exciting. This was like, it was a really hard dilemma on what to pick. I went with V8 Roadsters because they had built hundreds of LS, like high-powered LS cars. They know what it takes to stop one. Like they were the obvious choice, but I just didn't know how far I wanted to go with it. And it, it gets confusing because I didn't want to just upgrade the fronts. I wanted to upgrade the rears too. But the problem is I have dual calipers in the rear. So if I upgrade, like most of the kits, some people were on just factory sport rotors or sport calipers, but whatever I get, I have to get two of because I'm upgrading the rotor. So the stock caliper is not going to fit anymore. So I either had to get four uh, sport calipers, which are like almost a hundred bucks each used, or I could do their full kit plus another set of rear four pistons. So this is their full Elite Series, like four wheel big brake kit. So it's got two piece 11.75 inch rotors up front, uses the sport rotors in the rear. I've got both the rear brackets, front brackets to mount the calipers, comes with brake lines, comes with a master cylinder, which ships separately. So it's not here right this second, but regardless, comes with a separated reservoir master cylinder that's a different size to help with getting the correct ratio with the bigger brakes. The fronts are Dynapros, Wilwood Dynapros. You can see how much bigger the pistons are and stuff than the rear to help keep the split the same because most of your braking comes from the front. I also ordered a second set of these to run on the car. So I'll have these for the handbrake and these for the regular brake. It was, the cost difference was almost negligible when it came down to it between running nice four pistons, which are overall better. You don't have to deal with the slider. So you don't have to continually grease the slider. Brake pad changes are easy. You just pull this out, drop them in. Uh, just an overall better setup. So I just balled out and went with that. Everything on this car is like what I want. Everything I've, I've done to this car is like what I want. I haven't really made any compromises with the car. You know, the wiring, I went with the PMU, trans, the suspension, like everything I did on this car is what I wanted to do. It wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna do this because it's so much cheaper or I don't wanna spend the money on the nice stuff. Some stuff I did go cheap on like the cam and stuff. When it came to brakes, I was like, man, I really wanna, if I'm gonna do it, I wanna do it right. So that's where we're at with this brake kit. We've got Hawk pads for the front, DTC 60s. We're just gonna run the Willwoods in the rear. The confusing part again about all this is the second set of rear four pistons were back ordered from Willwood, so they are not gonna arrive in time. So what I'm gonna have to do is put just the fronts on leave the stock rear so I can have a handbrake. I need to put the handbrake in today as well. Run that for the drift day that night, come back and then take the stock rear brakes off and put the four pistons on the rear with the sport rotors. So we got our work cut out for us, but I'm very, very happy to have this kit and to upgrade the brakes on my car because it is much needed. Long-winded parts showing over. I'm gonna finish mounting up the power steering cooler and get that done before we move on to the brakes.
Okay, this is bracket number one we did, ended up with. It's angled like the body of the car at the bottom there. Goes down to the bottom of the oil cooler and then it has to angle forward, cut down a quarter inch to fit over the tow hook and then go over to cover the hole. The other side, there's no tow hook there. So we're just gonna mount to that bolt. Fingers crossed that uh, I did it right. Looks snazzy with the coolers like that though. Okay, I'm pretty proud of this one. For something I whipped up in 30 minutes, we got rib nuts, we got new 10 mil, so it looks nice at the bottom. Then it goes up. Steps up for the tow hook and everything is angled to match the body of the car, like everything. All right, we are done. Very, honestly, very happy with this. For how kind of quick it was yesterday, when I went to throw this cooler on and realized I couldn't just throw it on and the only way it seemed like to mount it was to mount it like over here and basically most of the back of it being blocked off and I was just like, I guess I'll just slap it on there all jankily because I don't have time and I was like all stressing about it and then Ben was like, let's mount them, you can mount them sideways and then after that, after I started doing it, like I'm so glad I did it this way um, and it was a fun project. Like fabricating stuff has reignited my like love for working on cars, you know? Cause sometimes you're just like, like changing a clutch isn't fun. You know, putting the brakes on, that's gonna be fun. Cause that's gonna be like a really big upgrade. It's gonna totally change the way the car feels. It's gonna look cool. Like it's, it's, it's all around exciting. Whereas some stuff just isn't that fun to do, but like fabricating is so rewarding. Like you sit back and you look at it and you make some mistakes. Like they're a little crooked, but like they're mounted and they fit and it looks good and it's super sturdy like they're not going anywhere and you can be proud of that so anyway sorry rambling gonna start working on the brakes i love all the little details of this kit like v8 roadster is engraved elite tells you right hand side left hand side very very nice this is the adapter bracket to go from the stock miata mounting location to to the willwood caliper so Look at this, two-piece rotor, son. <laughs> Straight pimping. Hidden by your freaking spacers. True. True. We want to see if that full lock caliper hits anything. It doesn't. That's good. And then we're gonna test the wheel on it first. Look at the size difference. <laughs> like, that's crazy. They're huge, okay? And huge. Oh, wheels fit no problem. Wheel fit also without spacers, no problem. We should check the other ones. My first time putting a freaking wheel on. Oh, that's why. Yeah. That clears barely with the spacers though. Well, not barely, but probably wouldn't clear without them. Most likely not. That's a, it might be it worth looks it. pretty pimp behind those. Doesn't it? Hell yeah, dude. Stunt. Just out here, stunt. Stunt. I'm just sad we can't install them right now. <laughs> thought that we weren't going to be able to install them because I didn't think the lines that come with the kit were going to be long enough because on a drift car you need extended lines but they are long enough they're just long enough so at full walk they just get tensioned it's literally like if they were half an inch shorter it wouldn't work but I thought I was gonna have to go find different lines and adapter fittings etc but the stock ones work rad so Ben's finishing up his side need to install brake pads put the wheels back on, work on the handbrake. All right, well the Hawk pads I ordered are not the right pads. 
I must have had the wrong information. So luckily we still had the Will Woods that came with the kit to put in. I just, I want her on the Hawk since it's a track car. Um, these are more of like, I think a street oriented pad, but besides the extra braking, the coolest thing about four piston calipers is how easy it is to install the brake pads. Pop, pop, and then you just send the pin through. Soup, and then you just Definitely put you out. Easier than dealing with all the like the painters and clips. yeah, slider and the like, little clips and everything. So much nicer. Change of plans number three or four. I don't even know how many times I've changed the plans now. We are gonna just go ahead and throw the rear calipers on. I don't care to have to rebleed the whole system like Tuesday night before the race. I might still have to for the master cylinder. It didn't end up showing up today. Either way, it's kind of in a tough spot, but the way you're thinking about it is if I like had made my handbrake the way I wanted it already and it was just switching it, it'd be one thing. If I had the other caliper and it was just throwing in the ham like a different handbrake for the time being, one thing, but to do both just doesn't make sense. It is just gonna be a shakedown day at OSW, so it's not like a normal event where we're gonna be in tandem trains, it's just gonna be like messing around. And I'm really using it as time to just shake the car down, figure out the issues, figure out how it drives, get comfortable in it, and all that stuff. So I'm just gonna wait, do the handbrake next week after all that. I should have the calipers, I should have the stuff I need to make the plate and everything, so I'm just gonna wait. Which is gonna be a very tough decision, very tough decision, because it's my first time drifting it, I wanna have a handbrake, but Ben made a good point. You know, he's like, you're not gonna be running door the first time you go out with this thing. Like, it's not that big of a deal, and I'm like, you're right, you're right, you're right. So, we are gonna install the rear brakes. Hooray! We do need to also drain all the fluid out. I don't wanna have contaminated fluid, we need to have all good fluid, so we gotta undo the lines, drain all the fluid out, put the rear brakes on, etc. So the rears are simple because it's just sport rotors. We don't have to do the two-piece rotor thing. We got pads, come with the kit. I got some extra fluid. I bought some Motul fluid, which we'll be using. I need to order more of it, but yeah. Oh, I thought that was brake pads. I'm like, wait, did I open the wrong box? I was wrong. My work area looks like this. It means I'm having a hard time. <laughs> uh, we got the rears on. It was a bit of a struggle. The bracket didn't fit with the destroyer die drop knuckles because of the brace as it drops down. The bracket hit it, so we had to cut the bracket. Um, just basically like cut the corner off of it. That wasn't didn't really do anything anyway to get this to fit properly. We got all the fluid out. Well, majority of the fluid out. We got all the lines hooked up. So we are now going to bleed the brakes. It's a shame we don't have the master because we're going to have to redo all this, but that's okay. Because I think, I don't know if the master is like a super easy install or if that's something that's going to be like a process. So anyway, we're going to start bleeding them, see how they feel. It does look sick though. I am very hyped to have nice brakes on the car. Like finally have like a legit car with legit brakes. It's freaking sick. That's gonna be a wrap for tonight. Amazon screwed me on my one day delivery of the Parker push lock hose that I need. So hopefully we get that tomorrow. Uh, but all the brakes are on. With the spacer in the front, it kind of hides the front ones. because they're not so close up. The rears look super sick. Look at that snazziness, snazzy brakes. So tomorrow, hopefully it won't be raining. We're going to Bushnell to go karting for Steve's birthday. So I will drive this there. We can test out the brakes. Again, we don't have the good pads in the front, like the track track pads in the front, but I mean, it should be a drastic, drastic improvement over stock. So anyway, I'll see you guys in the morning. It is rainy. We're almost to Bushnell and it's rainy. Karting in the rain is never fun because you're completely exposed. You don't have a vehicle to hide in. It's not just like the lack of grip, which can be fun in its own right, but it's just, you just get wet. Last time, we, the first time we came here for a league night, it was wet, it was raining. I remember it was really tough to drive the carts because it was our really basically our first time being here and like they just understeer really bad, it was crazy. So, should be interesting. I mean, I guess we're committed, we're doing it. Oh, I'll pass all y'all. Just don't get in my way, I'll run you over.
everyone ate it. figure out what's faster or slower. Made it back home, it's pretty late already. The uh, We had to wait like an hour for the track to dry up. By the time we drove and all that, it was like 4.30 before we left. Don't think we're gonna get any drive in before dark. We'll still go do a night drive. I wanna see how the brakes feel. I'm like super excited to feel the brakes. I wanna see how the power steering is. Now that we got the cooler on, I just got the lines wrapped up. Um, but I am still finishing uploading the dyno video, so it's kind of a confusing situation. Ben's finally starting on his car. He's doing a CA18 swap. <laughs> Gnarly. <laughs> Shit's gonna be sick. S slanging them coilovers, boys. Slanging them coilovers. I thought you were buying them. I didn't know you were buying them. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I got teams of mine. They're okay. They're okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I made a bit of a mess getting the power steering lines on because I had to take the old ones off. But we got them on. I need to zip tie them. If you guys didn't see, I, I went and tested in a abandoned neighborhood, and it was getting hot. Like the power steering was starting to whine. The fluid was boiling out of the cap, like it was bad. So that's why we rushed and put this cooler on. 3 8 push lock fittings, Parker push lock hose. It's a really nice way to do it if you don't feel like making lines and having adapter fittings for the other side and all that. Interesting note, I deliberated on which way to run this for a while. And I decided to run from the rack into the bottom of the cooler and then out of the top of the cooler into the reservoir up here. It seemed to make the most sense. When we did that, what would happen is you'd fill it up with it running, get it bled, turn the car off, and it would just puke like a quart back out. Uh, so we switched the lines, and that seems to have solved it. It sucks down a little bit and comes back up, but it, it's, you know, maybe like this much of the reservoir. AJ went into the line of fire <laughs> to help me switch the lines. Problem. Power steering fluid all over us. It was great. But seems solid. Seems solid. I need to throw the front bumper back on and we'll be ready to take it for a rip. All right, night toge run. It's kind of cool that we have, like living out here, like in a sense it sucks because it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, but there's pretty much everything around. And then on top of that, we have some cool driving roads. So it'll be fun. We'll make a run to the gas station. It's about 10 miles away and we'll rip back music. <laughs>
right, first drive was super, super successful. Very happy with it. It's funny, when I like left and I was like getting on the brakes a little bit, I'm like, man, these aren't, these are good and they feel better, but they're not quite as aggressive as I thought. And I'm like, oh, we're, we're running the street pads still, the Willwood street pads, they're not running track pads, so I guess that's it. But once I got embedded, oh my God, even with, with the street pads, like they feel insane, they feel amazing. Like the car stops very, very quickly, very aggressively. They didn't seem to fade after doing a bunch of stops to bed them. And it's very controllable compared to the stock brakes. The stock brakes, it was kind of like you're braking mildly or you're like about to lock them up or locking them up. Whereas this, I can get right up to lock up and back off just a little bit. Feels really good. It locks up the rears first. And I think once we have a track pad in the front and we leave the standard pad in the rear, it should be like perfectly even between the two. The only times it really locked up anything which was the rear was coming down a hill. So that's a big part of it. Anyway, I don't know. I'm so happy with this car. The power steering, I touched the reservoir after we got back and like normally the reservoir would be like really hot by now after that long of a drive. And it's not, it's like barely even warm. So power steering cooler is working, brakes are working great. Car is set up, car feels great. Like, I am so happy with this thing. I'm so happy with where it's at. I, last thing really is the handbrake and the other set of rear calipers and we're ready to send it. And the body kit, Adam finished the body kit. Hopefully we can get that on at some point. I don't know, it might be after the thing. But anyway, I'm rambling. I'm just, I'm hyped. Like the way this car feels now, it, it felt great before, but the brakes were such a big downfall on it. And it wasn't super confidence inspiring because you knew you didn't have the brakes there. But now with these brakes, like the car just feels I just feel like I'm gonna be really comfortable in it on track and I'm very excited for that. So anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. I'll see you guys tomorrow if you're there at the open house. If not, I'll see you guys in the video tomorrow where we will be at the open house. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, goodbye guys.